There are four steps to transfer a data in the downlink direction from eNodeB to UEs. First, the UEs report the channel state information CSI, that include the channel quality indicator CQI, pre-coding matrix indication PMI, and rank indicator RI to the eNodeB. On PUCCH and PUSCH channels. Second, the eNodeB scheduling algorithm determine which user's data should be transmitted, based on the reported CQI and the data in buffer. The scheduler decide the resource block, data rate and modulation scheme for the transmission. Third, based on scheduler decision the eNodeB send the data over air interface on PDSCH, how the data is transmitted is sent on PDCCH. Fourth, the UE receive the data and verifies the checksum and send to eNodeB and ACK or NAC on PUCCH and PUSCH channels. This video explain the CQI reporting optimization part. The UE report the CQI to support the various transmission modes open to them. The UE reports their feedback to the eNodeB periodically on PUCCH or NO periodically on PUSCH. The CQI feedback can be wideband referring to the entire spectrum, or subband CQI value applies to each subband in a frequency selective mode. PMI can be wideband or subband. Rank indicator influences the number of CQI reports which refers to different code words transmitted from eNodeB. A code word is the output of a turbo coder. The UE continuously monitor the reference signal level embedded within the downlink radio channel. The measured quality determine the largest block size and the modulation rate that UE is capable of receiving. The CQI feedback provides an instantaneous and fairly accurate feedback about the perceived downlink channel conditions to the eNodeB scheduler algorithm. The standard required that the UE must achieve 10% or less in-block error rate for every single transmission over air interface, as the Layer 1 and Layer 2 HARQ process using the incremental redundancy help to reduce and correct the block error rate after a few retransmission. CQIs can be reported periodically or aperiodically. For a UE in Frequency Selective Scheduling FSS, mode. The eNodeB selects a periodic CQI reporting, and the reporting modes are specified in uplink scheduling and CQIs are reported over the PUSCH. For a UE in frequency diversity scheduling, FDS, mode, the eNodeB selects periodic or aperiodic CQI reporting. In periodic mode, when there is no uplink data transmission, CQIs are reported over the PUCCH. When there is uplink data transmission, CQIs are reported over the PUSCH. If the periodic CQI reporting time conflicts with the aperiodic CQI reporting time, only aperiodic CQI reporting is triggered. The periodic CQI reporting interval is controlled by the CQI period adaptive switch parameter. If this parameter is set to off, the reporting interval is a fixed value specified by the user CQI period parameter. If the parameter is set to on, the reporting interval is adjusted based on the PUCCH load. When the load is light, a short interval is used. When the load is heavy, a longer interval is used. In an FDD cell, the periodic CQI reporting interval varies across the range of minimal CQI period to 160 milliseconds. In a TDD cell, the periodic CQI reporting interval is adjusted in the range of 20 milliseconds to 160 milliseconds. Aperiodic reports can be sent only if the eNodeB requests them as a part of uplink scheduling grant. The UE use the PUSCH for reporting. The aperiodic reports can be used for wideband and subband CQI. Configurations for aperiodic CQI reporting are different for FSS and FDS modes. Aperiodic CQI reporting is triggered at intervals configured for UEs in FSS mode. The interval is configured using the FSUE aperiodic CQI triggering period parameter. The CQIs that are aperiodically reported are only valid for a period of time specified by the FSUE aperiodic sub and CQI validity period parameter. 
if a UE in FSS mode does not use the reported resources within this period of time, these CQIs are considered invalid. If this parameter, which controls the validity period, is set to a value at least equal to the value used for the triggering period, FSUE a periodic CQI triggering period, then FSS is more likely to be selected for the UEs. A periodic CQI reporting is not triggered for UEs in frequency diversity scheduling mode if there is valid periodic CQI reporting. A periodic CQI reporting is triggered in the following situations. When there is no valid periodic CQI reporting in a period that is A times the periodic CQI reporting interval, a periodic CQI reporting is triggered once. When there are no resources for periodic CQI reporting, a periodic CQI reporting is triggered every 160 milliseconds. In FDD, a periodic CQI reporting can be triggered at intervals for UEs in FDS mode. This function is controlled by the Enhanced Aperiodic Channel Quality Indicator CQI, reporting option of the cell algo switch downlink scheduling switch parameter. The interval is specified by the FDU Enhanced Aperiodic CQI Trigger Period parameter. The CQI can be optimized in terms of reporting period and the adjustment of CQI value. In FDD, when the CQI period adaptive parameter is set to on, to adjust the periodic CQI reporting interval based on the PUCCH load, the E node beacon optimize periodic CQI reporting to increase the number of UEs that report CQIs at long intervals. Reporting optimization is controlled by the PUCCH periodic CQI optimization switch parameter. If this parameter is set to on, more UEs report CQIs at long intervals, fewer RBs are allocated to the PUCCH when the PUCCH allocation is dynamic, and more RBs can be allocated to the PUSCH to increase uplink throughput. However, the UEs do not promptly report channel quality and downlink performance may deteriorate. If this parameter is set to off, more UEs report CQIs at short intervals, the UEs promptly report channel quality, and downlink performance may improve. However, the uplink peak rate may be lower than that obtained when this parameter is set to on. During the initial access the UE receive the periodic CQI parameters in RRC connection setup message, if periodic CQI reporting fails repeatedly, a periodic CQI reporting is triggered. If the aperiodic CQI reporting fails a cyclic redundancy code, CRC, check, the aperiodic CQI reporting is triggered again at transmission time intervals, TTIs, later. To reduce the chance that aperiodic CQI reporting is triggered during initial access, the E node beacon optimized aperiodic CQI reporting triggering. By selecting the aperiodic CQI triggering optimization switch option of the cell downlink scheduling switch parameter. When this option is selected and an aperiodically reported CQI fails a CRC check, the E node B determines whether to trigger aperiodic CQI reporting again based on the DRX switch setting. If the DRX switch is turned on, a periodic CQI reporting is not triggered again. If the DRX switch is turned off, a periodic CQI reporting is triggered after 8 TTIs. A periodic CQI reporting can be configured in handover commands for UEs involved in handovers. This function is controlled by handover a periodic CQI configuration switch. If this switch is turned on, a periodic CQI reporting is configured in handover commands. When there are downlink services for UEs after handovers, a periodic CQI reporting is triggered if no periodic CQI resources are configured for the UEs, thereby increasing downlink throughput. If this switch is turned off, a periodic CQI reporting is not configured in handover commands. Instead, it is configured only after handovers. The CQI reporting may be delayed, and the CQI reporting interval significantly exceeds the scheduling period. As a result, 
the reported CQI may not reflect the channel quality and iBlear will be unable to approach the target optimum value. In such a case, the E node B must calculate the difference between the reported channel quality and the actual channel quality, based on HARQ feedback, and adjust the CQI accordingly. CQI adjustment is controlled by the CQI adjustment algo switch option of the cell algo switch parameter. If this option is selected, the E node B selects an MCS based on the adjusted CQI. If the selected MCS requires better channel quality than is available, the block error rate, blear, for data packets increases. The E node B then decreases the CQI based on the feedback from the UE. If the current channel quality is better than that required by the selected MCS, the blear for data packets decreases. The E node B reacts by increasing the CQI based on the feedback from the UE. The target I blear determines the CQI adjustment value. There are two type of settings of the downlink target I blear. Fixed configuration and adaptive configuration. The target I blear corresponding to a bearer of a QCI setup for the UE is determined by the initial downlink target I blear under cell QCI parameter. If all the target I blear values are defined zero under cell QCI parameter, then the target I blear is determined by the initial downlink I blear target under cell CQI adjustment algo parameter. If only one of the target I blear values is non-zero in cell QCI parameter, then the target I blear is the non-zero target I blur value. If more than one of the target I blur values are non-zero for the established QCI session for a UE, then a non-zero parameter value with the QCI that takes precedence over the other QCIs is used as the target I blur for the UE. The QCIs in descending order of precedence are as follows, QCI2, QCI1, QCIs for non-IMS signaling, and QCIs for IMS signaling. If there are multiple QCIs for non-IMS signaling, then the target I blur depends on the QCI that takes precedence over the other QCIs. The QCIs are sorted in descending order of QCI priority. If multiple QCIs have the same priority but correspond to different target I blur values, then the smallest target I blur value is used. The downlink target I blur can be configured both fixedly and adaptively. Adaptive configuration of the target I blur does not apply to UE's running services with QCI1. The downlink target iBlear adaptation is controlled by the downlink var iBlear target switch option of the CQI adjustment algo switch parameter. For FDD, if this option is selected, the E node B adjusts the target iBlear to 10% for UE's running non-small packet services at non-edge locations. 30% for UE's running small packet services at non-edge locations and UE's at cell edges. For TDD, there are two types of HARQ feedback, multiplexing and bundling. The types of feedback in TDD will be explained in HARQ topic. For UEs using multiplexing mode, is the same as FDD. If this option is selected, the E node B adjusts the target I blur to 10% for UEs running non-small packet services at non-edge locations. 30% for UEs running small packet services at non-edge locations and UEs at cell edges. For UEs using bundling mode. 10% for UEs running non-small packet services at non-edge locations. 5% plus the initial downlink I blur target under cell CQI adjustment algo switch parameter value for UEs running small packet services at non-edge locations and UEs at cell edges. As described in preceding slides the CQI adjustment algorithm is based on the iBlear value. The enhanced downlink target iBlear adaptation concept is to adjust the target iBlear based on the transport block size index as a threshold, and the iBlear value depend on the CQI fluctuation. Enhanced downlink target iBlear adaptation is controlled by the downlink enhanced var iBlear target switch option of the CQI adjustment algo switch parameter. If this option is selected, 
The E node B adjusts the target eyebler based on the transport block size index threshold for low target eyebler specified by the low eyebler target transport block size threshold parameter. When the transport block size index threshold for low target eyebler is 255, the E node B does not adjust the target eyebler based on the transport block size index. Instead, the UE number is used as the admission condition for the enhanced downlink target Ibler adaptation algorithm. For UEs performing services with slightly fluctuated CQI values, the target Ibler is changed to 5%. For UEs performing services with moderately fluctuated CQI values, target Ibler adaptation is used. For UEs performing services with heavily fluctuated CQI values, the target eyebler is changed to 30%. When the transport block size index threshold for low target eyebler is not 255, the E node B adjusts the target eyebler based on the transport block size index. For UEs performing services with slightly fluctuated CQI values, in this situation, the CPU usage is used as the admission condition for the enhanced downlink target Ibler adaptation algorithm. If the transport block size index is not less than the value of the low Ibler target transport block size index threshold parameter, the target Ibler is changed to 5%. If the transport block size index is less than the value of the low Ibler target transport block size index threshold parameter, the target Ibler is changed to 10%. For UEs performing services with heavily fluctuated CQI values, if the transport block size index does not exceed the value of the high Ibler target transport block size index threshold parameter, the target Ibler is changed to 30%. If the transport block size index exceeds the value of the high Ibler target transport block size index threshold parameter, the target Ibler is changed to 10%. For UEs performing services with moderately fluctuated CQI values, target eyebler adaptation is used.